There's no such thing as boring or uneventful days for those involved in drag racing, but that isn't always a good thing. Despite the success and popularity achieved by Street Outlaws since its 2013 premiere on Discovery Channel, the show is continuously the subject of controversy due to the dangerous nature of the street racing profession and the situations which have not only resulted in serious accidents, but put lives at risk and resulted in the passing of a cast member. While there's no question about whether street racing is as extreme as it appears to be, the recent unfortunate events surrounding street outlaws has been enough to fire up the debate on the show's future, safety issues, and the risks and consequences of the racing industry. So how dangerous is street racing, and how much has that affected street outlaws? Stay here to know all. While it isn't rare for racers to put their lives on the line for their passion behind the wheel, in the long history of street outlaws, no accident has had fatal consequences for many seasons. That is until on August 7, 2022, when racer Ryan Fellows was killed in a crash while filming an episode for the show's spin-off series, Fastest in America. Reportedly, Fellow's race happened early in the morning after at least eight other races had taken place on a Las Vegas Boulevard street. Fellow's Nissan 240Z was close to the finish line when he lost control of it, rolling over the track as the car caught on fire, losing his life in the process despite the emergency team's effort to rescue him from the flames. At the time of his death, Fellow's was a 41-year-old family man father to two teen children, and husband to Liz. As described in the funding campaign started by his family, Ryan worked as a sales agent and was passionate about basketball and cars. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration of Nevada started an investigation regarding the accident which ended Fellow's life, though the results won't be known until early 2023. Also, it was revealed by a Clark County officer that the required permit to film in the place where the accident took place hadn't been acquired by the show. Problems were soon to come for street outlaws following the death of Ryan. As reported by TMZ, Fellow's family sued Street Outlaws Network's Discovery and Lionsgate Entertainment for negligence before and after the accident which took Ryan's life. As read in the report, some of the strongest accusations by the family include the weather-beaten conditions of the road he raced over on the day of his accident, which they argued wasn't 30 feet wide as required by safety rules, but only 12 feet wide. Other descriptions of the roadway mention broken asphalt, dust, and lack of barriers, all of which they claimed were to blame for Ryan's loss of control over his car. The family also claimed that the network and people in charge of running street outlaws decided not to take appropriate safety measures, even though several accidents had occurred in races organized by the show before Ryan's death. They sat back, flipped on the lights and cameras, and waited for the next inevitable crash, they wrote. It's unclear how much money Fellow's family is asking for damages and whether the lawsuit will result in an ongoing case or settle out of court, but it's clear that the situation is complex. In the same year that the accident which took Ryan Fellow's life occurred, another dreadful crash had happened while filming Street Outlaws America's List. In April 2022, the Memphis team was filming on a roadway in La Villa in the south of Texas. Although previous races that day had been going well, the team's leader J.J. DeBoss and his wife Trisha Day were about to race each other in their respective blue and red Chevy 2 Novas. Just a second after both cars left the start line, J.J.'s Chevy caught on fire, causing him to lose control and inevitably crash against Trisha's car, sending it to the side of the road while rolling over. As seen on the show's screen, the accident was terrible to say the least and had everyone rushing over to the scene to help the pair. On his part, JJ was able to get out of the car on his own and rushed to take care of Trisha, whose car was still partially in flames at that point. 
JJ was treated for several burns, which only slowed him down for a couple of days, while Trisha underwent hip surgery and a months-long recovery process, marking this wreck as one of the most serious in the show's history. Not long after the death of Ryan Fellows, another terrible wreck in the show had a driver's life at serious risk. Said incident happened in October 2022 while filming Street Outlaws No Prep Kings in a roadway of Rockingham in North Carolina. Veteran Robin Roberts was racing his 1968 Pontiac Firebird against Justin Swanstrom's Lexus. But not long after the cars left the starting line, Robert's electric blue Firebird crashed against a wall. Though it's unclear if Robert's car caught on fire, the impact was enough to leave him unconscious. He was taken to the nearest hospital in Charlotte, from where, once he'd recovered, he took the time to inform his followers about his current situation. I have some recovery time for three ribs, a big concussion, and a collapsed lung, he wrote on Instagram, adding that he had no recollection of the accident when he awoke in the hospital, getting to know about the situation only once his wife Melody told him. In the next months, Robert's photos on social media evidenced that his recovery and the fixings of his car were advancing well. Nonetheless, even if Robert's accident wasn't as serious as others seen in the show, it made clear that crashes and subsequent wrecks kept occurring, even after the tragedy of Fellow's death. Following Ryan Fellow's devastating death, street outlaws apparently took certain measures to improve the safety of those involved with their spinoff, Fastest in America. Amid the lawsuit by the Fellow's family against Discovery, TMZ revealed that after Ryan's death, the show's production moved the rest of the season's races from street locations to a professional, safety measures complying raceway. While the importance of this move only pertains to the wrongdoing case against the network, it's not the first time that Street Outlaws has been questioned regarding their decisions. Back in 2016, then Tulsa's mayor, Travis Yates, warned about the dangers of the show's choice of race locations and how it could affect citizens in future years should a fatal accident take place. I'm going to have to answer for us allowing a show to come into our town sanctioned and glorify this activity, he told Tulsa World, adding that the number of complaints of illegal races had increased since the show started filming in the city, trying to follow the trend. Whether these comments had any effect on street outlaws is unclear, but there's no doubt that the worries about the show's safety and the consequences are nothing new. The rebellious, allegedly law-breaking ways of street outlaws has not only caused a bit of a backlash from general audiences worried about the dangers of their work, but also gained disapproval from the racing industry itself. In 2015, a letter sent by the National Hot Rod Association, the NHRA, to several street outlaws stars caused a ruckus, to say the least. In the letter, the association rejected the street racing activities in which the show took part, claiming it put people at risk, also emphasizing how the lack of usage of proper safety measure approved racing facilities increased the dangers to which those involved with it were exposed. The letter pointed out how illegal racing broke NHRA's guidebook of conduct and warned how the continuity of these activities could result in the suspension or revocation of drivers' competition licenses. Street Outlaws audiences weren't very receptive to NHRA's complaints, and a huge backlash against the organization soon came. Nonetheless, one year later at the NHRA's Summer Nationals, Street Outlaws main star, Justin Big Chief Shearer, admitted that the organization did a good job of securing drivers' lives. It really opens your eyes to how much can go wrong, he said, as reported by Hot Rod News. Saying that street racing is dangerous is an understatement, yet this topic never posted real worry in the show's audience until the death of Ryan Fellows and the subsequent lawsuit resulting. That being said, 
the series franchise won't stop airing new episodes since his death, even premiering Fastest in America's fourth season in March 2023, while taking care to leave any footage of Ryan out of it. Even though it isn't rare to question the show's future, given the nature of the lawsuit faced by Discovery, there are still no signs of it having any negative consequences on street outlaws. However, while the success of the series is most likely assurance that the show won't see its end anytime soon, further safety measures will probably be taken to prevent future tragedies. Whether the consequences of illegal street racing are the suspension of licenses or terrible accidents, or even worse, the loss of lives, one thing for sure is that since the beginning, Street Outlaws has been open with its audience about these issues. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on social media or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.